The news world is back in Tony Blair because we feel he'll make a strong Prime Minister. He stamped his authority on the Labour Party and on the election campaign. John Major, we feel, is a nice man, but he hasn't been strong enough to control the warring factions in the Conservative Party and they are therefore unelectable. At the Sunday Times, it came to the lesser of two evils. We think Blair's done a tremendous job with the Labour Party, but in the end, the issues of Europe and the economy were at the core, and we believe the Tories have better policies on both those. The Observer wants to see a Labour government. We are urging our readers to vote tactically to achieve that result. In most constituencies, that means voting Labour, but where the Liberal Democrats are the challenger, we're urging our readers to vote Liberal Democrat. Uh, Matthew Paris, the front page of the Telegraph there, it's all over, admit top Tories. Edwina Carey's quoted on the Press Association tonight as saying the Tories are headed for a landslide defeat with a lot of the blame down to John Major. Um, is there anything you can do to turn it round now? We, we spoke a little earlier in this programme about fashion. Uh, New Labour is the flavour of the month, it's fashionable. It's become the default answer that people give if asked how they're going to vote and whom they support. It makes opinion polls very hard to read. I have the impression, I've been all over the country with the Times over the last few weeks, I have the impression that Labour are clearly in the lead, but they're not nearly as far in the lead as the polls suggest. And Jude Kelly, you're quite comfortable having the endorsement of the News of the World and the Sun, are you? <laughs> Can't think of any two papers I would rather have the endorsement of. Um, I, I actually agree that I don't think anybody should still be complacent, because things can change very quickly. But if pr they get in, I think whatever side you support, you'll feel better with a change. Thank you both very much. Well, finally tonight, an explanation of how to get a bottle of champagne out of central office. It's intimately connected to Pottinger here, the Newsnight How Low Can You Go Award. The campaign stunts have been as cheap as ever this week. Pro-gun campaigners try to present David Meller with an enormous big toe bearing the side-splitting message Mella sucks. The photo was snubbed, in fact, stubbed by a cross campaign worker. In Birmingham, Labour's stunt to commemorate 22 supposed Tory tax rises with 22 John Majors was so surreal as to be completely unintelligible. The grocer's daughter was out shopping, but life's complicated among the common people. First, she couldn't pay for her shopping because she didn't have a cheque guarantee card. Well, the reason I don't want to have to go and put all these things back, so you better find a way of accepting my cheque. And then she couldn't manage that funny foreign currency of a little country called Scotland. Back to the home, Margaret. They still haven't learned about those animal photo opportunities either. <laughs> Michael Forsyth discovered you should never believe your campaign manager when he says the lion doesn't bite. <laughs> Paddy Ashdown finally found a listener he could have a proper discourse with. You live in New I live in New And do you, accept, do you accept that I think made the person to show that the vast majority of Newbury residents support the bypass? Um. Both ends of the cow took Mr Ashdown very seriously indeed. <laughs> the Prime Minister had his own promise. It is... Uh, tempting to me to offer a bottle of champagne to anybody who can find half a dozen subjects upon which Mr Blair has not changed his mind over the last ten years or so. I think you'd be pretty safe with your offer of champagne, Prime Minister. Well, that's the kind of challenge we can't resist. So the mass resources of Newsnight set out to discover the six issues where Tony Blair has been solid as a rock. It wasn't easy. Can you just check for me, has Tony Blair changed Labour's position on compulsory competitive tendering? has. <laughs> okay, thank you. We did eventually find six issues, including opposition to the Assisted Places Scheme and support for EU enlargement, though policies like the Angler's Charter were also there to make up the numbers. We sent our thirsty messenger off for the champagne. Well, it was uh, hard to get them actually to hand it over, but the champagne did arrive a short time ago, so many thanks to Mr Blair's consistency on angling. And in the spirit of reciprocity, after weighty deliberation, the judges have decided that the winners of the How Low Can You Go Award are Conservative Central Office. So, until Monday, when Kirsty will be here, that's, uh, well, good night from us, and uh, for its goodbye from Pottinger. Good night. <laughs>